Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be making some DIY candles in thrifted finds. Here we go. Hello, you all. I hope you're doing well. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while. I really love making these candles and uh, I just haven't made a video about it. So I'm going to show you first what you need if you should want to try this. I have collected some items to make my candles in. These are going to be country looking candles. Like they look like um, cupcakes and just kind of old fashioned, you know, country style candles. So anyway, I'm going to make some in this cake tin, this muffin tin. I have two of them and these I'll actually burn in, in the cake tins. You can try to like uh, pop them out. You can put it in the freezer and pop them out. That's just not what I want to do, but you could do that if you wanted to have the, um, the candle out of the cake tin, but the, the wick is going to be, you know, pointing up this way anyway. And I think they look cool in the old cake tin. So cupcake tin. So I'm going to be using those. I'm also going to try these. These are two, old milk bottles, milk bottles. Wow. Having trouble talking. And I thought I'd give these a whirl. I don't know if my wicks are long enough for this one. They may not be, but I think it's long enough for this one. We'll see. We'll try. And then also I just have a recycled, this is from a Dollar Tree candle that I burned through. All you have to do is once you're done burning it, you stick it in your freezer for like 10 minutes, pop out the rest of the wax and then scrub it with really warm water and dish soap and you have a nice vessel for a candle. So those are what I'm going to be using. I mean, you can use mugs, cups, you know, anything that can hold hot liquid is what you'll need. And then also I have a double boiler specifically for this purpose. So basically I'm gonna put water in here and then my wax in here. So I wouldn't use good pans for this, but this is, I bought this for that purpose. But if you didn't have that, you could use like a big pot of water and then a big pan to melt your wax. Uh, this is just what I'm going to be doing. This does not have a spout, which makes it a little harder to pour the wax out, but I'll do my best. And then um, I'm working on a quartz countertop. So if I do get hot wax on my counter, it just comes right off. So that's not a problem. And then I also have a scoop to scoop my wax. And then here is what I use. I will link my supplies down in the description box. I get them from Amazon. So I use soy wax. You could use beeswax. You could use paraffin. I mean, I generally like, I prefer soy wax, but um, it looks like this. Ugh. You get this big box. It's not too expensive and it lasts forever. And then I also got wicks. I think some came with my candle wax and then I think I bought some separate. So those are my wicks. They have these like wick holders. I'm not gonna use them today. And then you need something to um, scent your candles with. I use this essential oil. I'm, I got um, sugar cookie this time. You can really use any kind that you want, but I like, because they're gonna look like cupcakes, I wanted them to have like a cakey scent. So this brand is just on Amazon. I mean, I don't do a lot with essential oils. Probably wouldn't just, you know, use it in like other stuff, but for candles, I think it's fine. It's called Good Essential Sugar Cookie. So anyway, I will link all this in my description box. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and start melting our wax. Okay, so I have my double boiler. I'm just gonna fill this with water. And set that in there. And I'm gonna turn my heat on. And then I'm going to, so I have my heat on high. And I'm just gonna put a bunch of wax in here, no specific measurements, but I mean, I don't wanna overdo it because I you know I don't need too, too much to fill what I'm trying to fill. So you kind of base it on the vessels you wanna make your candles in. Should be good. Let's pull, maybe one more scoop. Okay. All right, and we're just gonna let this melt down. Okay. 
Okay, it was pretty much melted down, but I think I'm gonna need more because I'm worried about filling both those cake pans and I'd really like to get both filled if I can while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna add some more. You just, you know, just add it in if you have room in your pot. Well, you need to put scent in your candles if you like scented candles. I like them to be scented. So I'm gonna add my sugar cookie scent. I like highly scented candles. This unfortunately is trial and error. I can't tell you how much to put in because it's based on how much wax you're making and how many things, but I'm gonna put a decent amount into mine because um, I want them to have a good throw. So, and also if you want to color your candles, now is the time that you would do that. I don't color them just because, I don't know, it seems unnecessary to me. I don't mind the white, but um, this would be the time that you would do that, so. Okay, and before we pour the wax in, we gotta put a wick in. I did measure and my wicks are not long enough for this bottle, so I'm gonna set this one aside, but I already got this one set up. And basically, you, there are little sticky things you can get to put on the bottoms of your wicks and stick them to the bottom of your vessel. So I'm just gonna kinda try to get it towards the center as best I can. And I'm using a clothespin to hold this long one in place. So, and then for the shorter ones, I'm just gonna kinda stick it there. I'm just going to dip the bottom of the wick into the wax and kinda stick it down and that will help to hold it in place don't burn yourself these are pretty long so i'm going to snip them i'll do the first snip now and the last snip later but this will at least help them stay better okay so got that one done slide that aside i'm not going to do the other one because i'm not convinced i have enough wax so we'll start with just the one cake pan. And then for this one, I'm gonna cut this one way down. Dip it. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Oh, where's my where's my uh, Dollar Tree one? Oh, right in front of my face. If we were any closer, it would bite me. Okay, this one I'll use a clothespin for again. So, sorry if you heard that kick on, that is my air filter kicking on. I hear a sound in the background. Okay. And the clothespin just helps to um, keep it in the center-ish. There we go. Okay. All right, so we've got that. Now, here's my wax. This pot is terrible for pouring. So I did, um, I have this. You really need like separate candle making supplies. This is just a spare measuring cup that I'm gonna use for this. Um, you don't wanna use your stuff that you use for food. I'm just gonna kinda pour some of my wax into here so that I can pour it better into my vessels. Let's do this one first. Okay, and I've got my little funnel. Should hopefully help it to go in there better. You can see my wax, my wick moved, that's fine. see if we can get it into the center again. Hmm. That'll be good. It's kind of curving. It's kind of doing some weird stuff. Hmm. Well, that's not good, friends. Let's see if we can straighten it out a little. Get it to stay a little better. Figures this does this on camera, right? <laughs> there. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We'll try to get it a little more towards the center. Okay, and then I don't want to move it too much, but I'm going to do the Dollar Tree one next. And I'm 
just holding the wick in place because once I pour more wax, that little sticking that I did kind of comes undone. So it just needs to, needs to uh, cool a little. There we go. Just to get so that it stays in place. All right. Smells delicious. Smells like sugar cookies. This one's gonna be a little fussy. I don't know if I can get this to... I'll get it to rest, there, there. I should be able to just get the clothespin to rest and then it kind of stays towards the center. Best I'm gonna be able to do with the clothespin. There we go. It's gently pouring. There it goes. I'm just, I don't have any more clothespins, so I'm just gonna use these. It just needs something to lean up against so that it stays kind of in the center until it cools a little bit, so. I do have a little bit more, definitely not enough to fill the other cake tin. Okay, so I have a little bit of wax left. I might melt a little bit more if you can see that there. I got an idea from a channel I watch. Let me turn the camera up. There's a, cam there's a channel that I watch called Homestead Tessie. She makes candles like this. She had the idea to let some of the wax cool and as it cools, it gets the texture of like frosting and then you can frost your candles, the ones in the cake tin anyway, and really make them look like cupcakes. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough. I might put a little extra in, just melt a little bit more down so that I make sure I have enough to do that. So that's the next step. In the meantime, these are just gonna kinda sit here. And then I should mention, they do have to cool for 24 hours once I frost them. They have to cool for 24 hours. I've never used these. These are wick holders, I've never had them. Ha, that would have made my job much simpler. So these would basically take the place of the clothes pins. So basically it's, you know, made to go on a round vessel. It wouldn't have worked in the tall, the milk glass one, but it probably would have worked in the cake pan ones. But anyway, the idea here is that it holds your wick in the center and they sent me three of them. So you could do three at a time with that. So anyway, um, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, clothes pins, little knives, and, uh, or if you're fancy, you can have these. So <laughs> I'll use those next time. Okay. Our extra wax is cooled and is now the consistency of mashed potatoes maybe like boxed mashed potatoes, <laughs> but it should do the job. So I'm going to take all the little things. I mean, these candles won't be like completely cool for 24 hours, but the wicks will stay in place now. And I'm just gonna take a dollop of quote frosting and put it on each one. Just like that around the wick just for funsies to make it look more like a cupcake or a muffin, whatever you wanna call it. Oops, got it on the wick there. And 
I'm gonna do the same on my little heart tart here. And it just gives it that like country cake candle kind of look, you know? Whoopsie. And a little bit left. Oh, there's a lot of it left. Let's see here. Well, a little extra. I've got some extra here. I could put some on my little mason jar. Why not? Why not? Have a blast with it. Actually, I'm just going to add a little to this one. And then pull my little mason jar. It looks like a cupcake in a jar. Okay, and the last thing you can use sprinkle. You don't have to do anything. You can be done. Or you can use sprinkles. I'm going to use cinnamon. I have some cinnamon in a little shaker. And it's just a little extra topping to add to the look. And then I will trim down the wicks once everything's completely once it's all completely dry, again, remember I said it takes about 24 hours for it to get completely dry. So I'll cut the wicks down a little bit more at that point. I'm cleaning up and I am inserting this in the video because I don't know if I mentioned it. Homestead Tessie also says you can use like dried fruit as a topping. You can use sprinkles. Maybe I said that already, like birthday cake sprinkles, uh, any number of different things. So anyway, and I will link her video in my description box below. So you can check that out as well. And this one, I'm just going to leave a little milk jug. So there we go. There are our little country primitive soy candles. Okay, it's the next morning, and I just wanted to show you. So they're all hardened now, and I'm going to trim the wicks. So for next time, the only thing I would do differently, I need to make sure I have those wick stickers. I think they're called like wick stickums. And those will just keep the wicks in place better. But other than that, I'm really pleased with how they came out this time. So let's go ahead and trim the wicks and I'll light some of them so you can see what they look like. All lit. This one I'm gonna keep as a decorative thing because I just really like it. <laughs> I think it'll be pretty on a tiered tray. Would have been nice for Valentine's Day, but you know. A little late. And obviously to light this one, you need a stick lighter. I'm not gonna light them all at once. That would be a really highly scented situation, but for the camera, I'll light a few of these. So I hope this was fun. I love making candles. This is a really nice project and it's not hard if you get this. And once you have the supplies, you can like do them over and over. So, I mean, you know, once I burn through this, I don't have to throw this out. I can just make another one. So anyway, hope that was fun and thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.